Hey, Richard Bryce here, Tennis Hacker. Today, we're gonna to be working on sliced backhands and I'm gonna show you how to hit the perfect sliced backhand. You're gonna be hitting it exactly like Federer in three simple steps. Okay, maybe that's a slight stretch. I just wanted to say it one time. We're not gonna hit our sliced backhands like Federer because he is one of the greatest players of all time. But hopefully what I'm gonna be able to do is give you some really useful information that you can use to drastically improve your sliced backhand over time. Because it is gonna take practice, it is gonna take work, and it isn't just a case of simple steps. It's really about developing a feel for the ball. But hopefully I can give you some ideas around that that you might not have seen on any other channels. Now I'm not the greatest player but my right-handed slice backhand was by far my best shot. I could use it as an attacking weapon and it was very good defensively. And since I've been playing left-handed, I've been able to develop a pretty good slice backhand in a very short space of time. Now, when I first started trying it, I was hitting the back fence half the time. So it wasn't something that necessarily came naturally to me. There are certain things that I did and ways that I thought about things and progressions that I used. So that's what I'm gonna go through in this video. And hopefully you'll be able to get some really useful information out of it. It will give you ways ways to think about things and things that you can try that will allow you over time to start to really develop your slice backhand and turn it into a bit of a weapon. So I hope you do find this video helpful. I apologize for the poorly taste joke at the start. I couldn't resist. Um, and if you haven't already done so, make sure you subscribe to my channel. Okay, so like I said in the intro, there's no perfect way to hit a sliced backhand. So I was being tongue in cheek, but I was also trying to illustrate a point with it. Because if you think about one perfect way to do it, it's actually gonna prevent you from improving. It's gonna come down to you developing the feel, the hand-to-eye coordination, the timing for the shot, and that takes a little bit of time, it takes a little bit of experimentation. So that's what you need to do. Now with that said, we've obviously got certain physics to the situation. To create slice, we've got to either come down the back of the ball or come come underneath the ball. But generally, there's gonna be a little bit more of a vertical swing path. So to do that, we have to start high. We're gonna go from a unit turn, we're gonna take the racket back high. The exact position you take your racket back into is gonna depend on the shot that you're dealing with. Sometimes it's gonna be higher and you might even open up the wrist. Like if you're dealing with the high balls, you, you actually have to flick the wrist a little bit. If you're dealing with lower balls, potentially you can take it back a little bit lower and you might need to come underneath it a little bit. So the take back is gonna vary from shot to shot. The follow through is gonna vary from shot to shot as well. Like you see a lot of people talk about you need to finish through and up. And yes, sometimes that is exactly what's gonna happen. But the follow through is a product of the, the momentum and what's kind of going on with the racket. So sometimes it is gonna come through, but if you've watched Federer play, a lot of times you chop down on it and you're gonna finish down in that position because just that's the way you need to do to make the shot work. So really importantly, you understand that there's no perfect way to do it. It's just experimentation. And I personally believe the best place to start is with a ball basket, just drop feeding yourself. So you can just gain a feel for things. So you can see what's going on and just kind of try and drop through it. See what it's like to try and get a little bit of inside out spin, try and come around the outside. Just drop the ball for yourself and start to get a feel for this stuff. My biggest piece of advice to you is just have fun with it. Play around with seeing what it feels like to go cross court, with what it feels like to go down the line. Don't worry about making mistakes and hitting the back fence or hitting the net. Just drop the ball for yourself. Try and get used to the feeling. Once you've got the hang of that, you can start to make yourself move a little bit, move forwards, move back, just kind of be a bit more animated. But there is no shortcut to it. It's just developing feel and control of your racket head. Okay, so we start with just a drop feed for ourselves because it makes the contact point easy and you can start to get a feel for things and kind of get a little bit of experimentation going. But we then obviously need to continue the process and work on a more realistic ball. This is where ball machines can come in really handy or getting a basket of balls and working with a partner because you need to experiment. You just need to get a feel for it. You need to test things out. Now, the two keys for me, and it might be different for you, but what I found for me was racket head speed and keeping my head still on contact. So keeping your head still on contact should be kind of a given for every shot, but for the slice backhand, I find that racket head speed is absolutely crucial. If you're too tentative and you go too slowly, it just doesn't work. You gotta get that bite on the ball. So really trying to get the racket head speed, play around with it. I'm gonna start off with a nice easy feed, simple ball. I'm just gonna work on, you know, getting the feel. Going cross court, going down the line, what does that feel like? Okay, simple feed, cross court, down the line, just trying to get used to things. 
like I've just said, racket head speed is going to be important, so you need to keep the intent in mind. You know what type of shot you want to hit. You want to be kind of hitting that penetrating slice. You take the racket back high, think about where you're trying to hit the ball, try and keep your head still on contact, focus on what you're doing, and then just play around with it. Have fun. Again, be prepared to make mistakes. You can see that one was a little bit more floaty, not quite as good, but you do need to maintain the racket head speed. Okay, so we've just looked at racket head speed kind of being important. Something I worked on quite a bit, which I found was really helpful, was just trying to do outrageous drop shots. So basically this is just trying to develop a feel for what's going on, and that's why you need a ball machine or a partner feeding you. But just same feed, but instead of trying to go for those kind of penetrating slices cross court and down the line, I'm gonna try and do some outrageous drop shots, maintaining that racket head speed, just trying to get it to just land over the net. I'm gonna start by working a little bit cross court, and then I'm gonna go working a little bit down the line. There's probably gonna be a lot of mistakes because it isn't necessarily a shot that I would try and hit like this, but it's just about developing that feel. Okay, so this is what it looks like. It's the exact same feed that I just had set up. So same type of ball, but now instead of trying to slice through it and get it penetrating and hitting deep, I'm trying to do a drop shot. We're gonna take a look at the contact points in a second and you're gonna see how similar this is, but this is all about intent and all about keeping your head still. So I honestly don't think I could articulate exactly what I'm doing. I'm just thinking about trying to get a little more bite, a little bit more height on the ball, but I'm really trying to maintain that racket head speed. When I start to go down the line, obviously you can see I, I kind of do something slightly different with my body, but I could not tell you exactly how to make this work. I'm just thinking about where I want to hit the ball. I'm coming down the back of it hard and then just really trying to keep my eyes focused on the target. So I wish I could give you a better explanation than that, but I'm not sure there is. That's why I think it's about really practicing, developing slice, but the key is gonna be racket head speed, keeping the head still, and then going for it. And so let's take a look at the contact points. This first shot is gonna be the penetrating slice. So it's actually a slightly higher feed than I was doing a moment ago. I just set things up differently, but that is what the, the penetrating slice looks like. This one is now gonna be the drop shot. So the same feed that I've just done the penetrating slice off, but it just looks slightly different. So we're gonna pause it in a second and look at the exact contact points, but they look pretty similar. So the racket goes back high, stepping into it. One thing that you'll notice is I'm leaning forward quite a lot and so there's quite a lot of weight on the front leg, but then keeping that head still on contact way after the ball's gone. So that was penetrating again. And now we'll look at the drop shot again. So again, racket goes back high. It looks fairly similar. Weight is on that front leg. So there's maybe a little bit more weight on the penetrating ball. But let's take a look at the contact point and this might surprise you. The one on the left is the penetrating shot. The one on the right is the drop shot. You can see the angle of the racket face is marginally more open on the drop shot, but it's not much. It's really hard to think about consciously controlling that, which is why I believe it's all about feel, playing around with it, experimenting, and just getting used to, to what happens when you do different things with your body. Okay, so far we've been dealing with quite an easy ball. It was a drop feed and then this perfect ball from the ball machine. But obviously a lot of the time you're having to deal with tricky stuff on court. So something you definitely want to work on and practice is trying to hit slice from a higher ball. So this can be really important for, the feel for this can be really important for returning serve as well, um, especially a kick serve. But a lot of the time in a match, you'll be able to get out of a fairly tricky situation if you've worked on the feel for these slices. So for this one, um, you're definitely going to have to take the racket back a little bit higher. What I find is that I actually flatten it out as I start the swing. So I flatten things out and then that allows me to, to kind of rotate and chop down onto the ball. So I'm going to show you a few of those. Again, racket head speed is going to be important and keeping my head still on uh, contact is going to be important. Okay, so you can see take back is high, but it actually looks fairly similar to the other take backs. What really changes here is that as I start the forward swing, I flatten out my racket a little bit. This wasn't something that I consciously did. Again, I'm just, the intent is there. I'm trying to come down the back of the ball, and that's what allows you to get the backwards momentum down the ball on a higher shot. Unless you do that, you can't really chop directly down the back of it. Also notice that I'm still on that front foot. I'm not leaning back when I hit this. I've got most of my weight on the front foot, still trying to get that racket head speed and still really trying to keep my head still on contact. 
Okay, so so far we've been focusing on just developing a feel, manipulating the racket head and working on that side of things. But I also want to show you just a little bit of footwork um, that you might find helpful. Um, one of the trickier balls to deal with, so we've just looked at that high ball, which can be tricky. But another trickier ball to deal with is going to be the low, hard, deep one that skids through. The reason this one can be tricky is it's about the timing, the hand-to-eye coordination, but it's also about the footwork. So the footwork pattern, you're going to be basically doing a, a shuffle step or a crossover step as you hit it. And this one can feel a little bit weird. You know, normally you're stepping in and you're on that front foot. Now you're gonna be prepared in position. And as you rotate your body, as you swing with your arm, you're just gonna be sidestepping and moving backwards or doing a crossover and moving backwards. And this is how you deal with those low, hard, deep ones. So you don't have much time to react and you just move in there. And again, really important that you keep your head still on contact. Okay, so I didn't actually do a very good job setting the ball machine up on this one. The ball is kicking up a little bit higher than I'd intended rather than skidding through. But it's a deep feed, so the footwork still applies. I'm having to hit the slice as I do the crossover or shuffle step. Now, if you're interested in footwork, I've got another video where I've gone into depth about dealing with deep one-handed backhands. I'll place a link here so you can check that one out. But there's a couple more things I want to mention in this part. Okay, so the first thing is that it's even more important to focus on keeping your head still on these deep balls. So focus on it, try and keep your head still for a moment or two longer than you would expect. Next thing is that you're not gonna need the same racket head speed because you're gonna use the pace of the ball that's coming towards you. And then the third thing is that this is generally a defensive position. So just focus on getting it back deep. It doesn't matter if it floats a little bit more. Okay, so that's the way that I've worked on my slice backhand to develop it into a pretty good shot fairly quickly. It's all about experimentation, trying to get a feel for manipulating the angle of your racket head on the different types of shot. And really what this comes down to is your level of hand-to-eye coordination. As you practice, you should get better because the stuff that we practice, we get better at. So if you're practicing and trying this and you can't get control, you're not able to develop your stroke in the way that you want, it tells you that your hand-to-eye coordination probably isn't good enough to do what you're asking it to do. In which case, you want to start to work on that stuff. And that's really the area that I work with tennis players. I teach them brain-based training techniques to improve how their body functions so to train the visual system to train the coordination so they've got more skill and they can play at a higher level to help you with that I've got a few resources the first one is a free tennis vision starter program it's gonna help you to train your visual system really important for everything you do on court the second one I've created a resource to show you how to improve your coordination and your wrist control so definitely advise checking that one out that's also down below but of course if you just want to get as much help as possible with this stuff um, we could potentially work together I'd love to talk to you more about it there's a link that's going to allow you to schedule a free chat with me okay i hope you found this video helpful if you did it'd be awesome if you give me a thumbs up any questions or comments leave them down below and i'll see you next time